and mental health is something that we don't talk about enough. In the black community, well, we're massively overrepresented in, in the mental health institutions, even more so than in the prisons. And again, these are questions we have to ask. Well, why? You know, but once you get a control and an understanding of who you are, no one can use you against you. No one can ever use your mental illness against you. You've already spoke about it, so what mm -hmm. you got? The biggest point in life to resolve mental health is like giving a fuck about a person. Where did you get the courage? I got the courage. The two words. I care. It's Chill Wheel Radio, where connections will be made, advice will be given, jokes will be told, and things will get real. My name is Willis Cooks, and I'm your host. But understand this. This show is not meant to be used as a substitute for a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. Enjoy the show, y'all. Yo, 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 what's the deal, what's the deal, what's the deal? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another fabulous, fantastic, all them dope-ass words of Chill Well Radio, man. This is episode of the again, 32, episode 32, man, so welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're tuning in right now, good looking. If you uh going to tune in halfway through the show because you got something going on, you're watching, I don't know, Toronto getting their ass beat or some shit, good looking. If you gonna tune in tomorrow, next month, next week, whenever the hell you tune in, good looking. And even more so, if you ain't never gonna tune in ever in life, and you just like, fuck Willis, you don't know what you're talking about, and blah, 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 and all this extra stuff. Good looking to you too, big homie. Good looking to you too, man. I always say, man, it is those individuals who, in which, who don't fuck with me. Those individuals who don't give me a shout out. Those individuals who don't listen. Those individuals who try to stay away. They give me the energy, the motivation to at least go and grab them. Because even though I am very fortunate to have one of y'all ears, and I, I, I tell Keith this all the time, like, don't show me the numbers of the actual show. I don't care how many people are listening. Well, I do, but I don't care to track it. You know, I'm good for one one person to listen, that's good too. But for those individuals who ain't never going to listen at all, shout out to you too, big homie. Shout out to you too, man. Um, if you're listening in the comments, please, please check in. I always like to acknowledge those individuals who are listening. And um, welcome to the show, my man. We'll be we talking about all things mental health, the good, the bad, the ugly, the taboo, the not so taboo, the things people think we shouldn't be talking about, all that reckless shit over here in a real way, in a hood way, in a real way, hood way. That's the first time I said that. I don't know. But hey, what's the deal, man? But how is my week? How am I doing? How is this going on? Everything's good. Working, working, working. Everything is going on. Everything is going fine. Everything is going good, Didier. Didier is trying to coach me and tell me I'm good. <laughs> Shout out to Didier, man. He come by every week, man, and record these shows, man. He got the lights, the cameras, all this other shit, man. If you need a photographer, uh, Didier, what's your, what's your, it's like Diddy Gomez or something. At Diddy Gomez on Instagram, man. He, he, he does the videos for this show. I edit them, but he records them. He takes pictures. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. They gonna expect it, and then like, shout out to Diddy for the for, for, for being a real brother and being here every week, man, and, and looking out for your boy, man. So if you need any type of work, especially when it comes to photography, man, he's mobile. He will come to you. He ain't extra. He ain't hella high with his prices, but he ain't gonna give you. Like, he's not finna charge you $10 for an hour's worth of sessions. I know that much, you know. So, shout out to my man Didier, man. Um, but, for me, how was my week? How was it? Eh, it was all good, man. It was all good. One thing that's kind of been frustrating me throughout this week, man, is it's just within work, particularly, um, I work in hospitals. I work in uh, two hospitals, and I'm around doctors a lot. I'm really seeing how fucked up doctors are, how doctors will really just, like, like fucking kill a patient and not give a fuck. Right, how doctors will like it was one doctor that paralyzed a patient and just like fuck it, oh well. Let me send her off somewhere and just forget it. It's like damn motherfucker, she walked in here and now she ain't walking out. She ain't never gonna be able to walk again. But you know, hey, it, it, it is what it is, man. This medical field, this mental health field, this 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 helping professional type of field is cold because you got people in it who really just don't really care who just kind of in it because they get money from it or it was something that people was raised on but then you got other individuals who legit care and 
you know, sometimes for me, it, I have to catch myself all the time because I'm that individual that will tell a doctor, like, the only difference between me and you is that she went to school longer than I did. That's it. You just went to school 10 years longer than I did. I stopped and you decided to keep going. Ain't no difference. So you're not finna come at me and talk to me like I'm just a, a, a cockroach because that's how some of these doctors be speaking to these nurses. That's how some of these doctors be, be speaking to these administrators and patients as if they just holier than thou. And I'm just like, nah, fuck that, homie. I don't care where you from. I don't care about none of that. You need to really respect that individual that you're helping because the one thing that kills me about it is just you have to ask yourself one word. Well, one question, one phrase, one statement. If that was you, would you want to be treated that way, right? If if you was that patient laying in that bed and, and, and your doctor paralyzed you and your doctor just giving you the bullshit, it's just, oh, would you appreciate that? Would you? Nine times out of ten, they're going to be like, nah, hell nah. So I just don't get it. It's that disconnect that really be, be, be doing this service really be harming is very detrimental to a lot of folks out here but i can't can't do nothing about it you can't well i can do something about it i got my plans to do something about it um but other folks man who just have to take it man and, and those nurses who just take it man i always tell them man you need to speak up for yourself speak up for yourself don't let these doctors just run through you but they got to work with the doctors and uh, I'm, I'm i'm a different type of therapist and social worker and employee i'm not just gonna allow somebody to talk shit to me like the way doctors do but anyway, <clears throat> that's that, that's that, that's that. But moving on forward into the self-care piece, man. Moving on forward to the self-care piece, man. The one thing that I want everyone to start implementing within their self-care regimen. Um, you can do this shit tomorrow morning. Um, and it's very, very simple. And it's 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 something that a lot of us don't do, right? I know my girl doesn't do it. Uh, Dieter, you make up your bed in the morning? Nope. You make up your bed in the morning? Nope, nope, uh-uh. I just asked half the room in here, do they make up their bed in the morning? They was like, nah. The self-care piece that I want everyone to implement within their self-care regimen is just to make up your bed. <clears throat> Every morning, make up your fucking bed, right? Make up your bed. Make your bed. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be neat. It doesn't have to be anything. But just take that second out of your day to make up your bed, right? It's those small things, right? The reason why making up your bed, I believe, is so important is because it's those small things that are going to transform into something else, right? If you have a problem with discipline, if you feel as if you lack discipline, you need to start somewhere small, right? Discipline isn't something you're just going to wake up and I'm just like, oh, I'm good. Like, nah, start somewhere small. So if making up your bed every morning is that one way in which you're going to be able to train or, or learn discipline become a more disciplined person do that it doesn't have to be hotel neat it doesn't have to be that but just do that every single morning right that one task right that 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 ability to, to like hey i'm not something off early in the morning gives you that energy or gives you that motivation to start to be able to knock other things off right because it's like i did this and i didn't want to do this right sometimes i make up my bed every morning Every morning, I'd be like, nah, I, not every morning, but it'd be some mornings where I'd just be like, nah, I ain't fucking with it. I don't want to do this, but I still do it. And sometimes it'd be crappy. Some days it'd be better than others. But the thing is, it's, 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 it's about, it's about, <clears throat> it's about going against those negative thoughts. When your brain is telling you no, it's about learning how to still say yes when your brain is telling you no, right? Learning how to still say yes when your brain is telling you no. Because like I said, a lot of the times my mind be telling me don't make up your bed, but I still have to do it, right? And here's the thing, when we start to do something small over and over and over, it becomes a habit. It becomes a habit and sometimes, not sometimes, all the time we need to start at somewhere, someplace to create a positive habit, to create something good. So doing that right there is going to create something good, right? And then also, right, your whole room could be messy. Your home room could be messy, but if you have at least that one neat place in your room, it's not going to make your room feel as messy. That's the same with your brain, right? That's the same with all of those things in your head. If you got all of this shit in your head fucked up, if everything in your life is fucked up, but you got this one area in your life to where it's cool, it's not going to feel as bad, right? Because when you walk into your room and everything is a mess, oh, it's going to stay a mess. But if you used to have a bad day and then your bed is made up and your bed is neat, that's going to give you that ability to just pass out because you ain't got to look for this. You ain't got to do this. You ain't got to do all this extra shit. 
Just make up your bed. And it, it's simple, but nobody in here does it. <laughs> nobody here doesn't, man. Those small tasks goes a very, very long way, right? We have to start small, especially if you're trying to build discipline. It's a very easy way to learn how to build discipline. So make up your bed every morning. It doesn't have to be military neat. It doesn't have to be hotel neat. No, just fucking put the cover down. Put the pillows underneath it and just move on. Shit. But I guarantee you, when you come back after that long, hard day and you see your bed made up, it's, it's going to feel even much better to lay on it instead of trying to fish through it and, and you got all this stuff and then you probably didn't lost something within it. Like, my girl told me, like, a few weeks ago, like, man, I can't find my, my chapstick and blah, 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 blah. And that shit been in her bed this whole time. She been rolling around her chapstick. She got all of these big-ass covers, and it's messy. And this shit in her bed. Just make it up. Fixing those small things in your life is going to be able to make a huge, huge difference. You're not going to fix a big thing real quick. You need to sm- fix those small things very s- slowly, steadily, and all that good stuff. All right? So the self-care piece that I want everyone to make up for, the self-care piece that I want everyone to put within their self-care regimen, make up your motherfucking bed, y'all. Make up your bed. So moving on forward, moving on forward into the main topic of the show, right? Um, I got my guy, my guy, my guy, JD. What's the deal? What's going on? What's, What's up? Popping, brother. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Getting treated nice in LA. You know, still re- gaining my strength. <laughs> not too much turn up, but you know, other than that, I'm Gucci. Man, thank you for making it in. And uh, shit, this your second time in LA? Yeah. So the first time I came, I was here only for two days, so I didn't get to really do as much as I wanted to. That don't count. This your first time. Oh in LA. Well, yeah. Okay. So this is my first time. <laughs> but I feel like. This time around, it was easier because I got to chill, you know, with my family. Yeah. And uh, we got to hang out and go out and do certain things. So I'm kind of excited. I will be coming back, too, because <laughs> y'all are definitely the fun, <laughs> the move. It's the move. but I, And we were just talking about this early yeah. on. And we talked about this a few times. Like, if you're going to move out here, make sure you have some yeah, money. Bread. Yeah. Make sure you have some yeah. attack because it's, it's a lot of people who – What's well, a lot of people I know from college, like we both went to the same school. That's how we know each other. We both went to, you know, what they say, the illustrious, Clark illustrious Atlanta. Clark Atlanta University. Yeah, it's a lot of people from school who went out there and moved out here, and they didn't have nothing in their pocket. Right, they had to go back home. Yeah, I think I noticed that too. Even in college, uh, a lot of people, <laughs> and they told us. I don't know if they told your professors told you too, but they was just saying they made us like look to the left, look to the right. They said you gonna see the same people next semester. Oh yeah, I literally in, in the dorm had the people I you know was in the dorm with me. I did not see them next semester. Shit. How many of those individuals did you even graduate with? Oh, I mean, none. Uh, not, not many. Man, and then, <laughs> and especially those first few days, that, that the orientation, the uh-huh. first week, you got you get your click real fast, right. like, real quick. I can tell you, it's only, out of everybody, it's only one person who graduated. Only one. And, and Gerald. Oh, Gerald? Yeah. Oh, that. That's crazy. Out of everyone, it was like a good four, five of us. Nobody like Wait nah Trub did too Oh yeah he Trub. did girl. Yeah, yeah. Trub did too But The majority of folks Man shit happens Shit leaves man. Shit happens Shit leaves Shit happens People leave Things get tough And you know We don't know people's story And yeah. Clark is gonna force you To find a way to make one And that's the motto Yeah But uh, It's all about figuring out You know So right. even out here Like with people who came out here And they don't have nothing In their pocket They gotta figure it out But some people Aren't really built that way to be able to figure it out. Right. Some people just like, hey, I, I don't have the energy to find what I need to find. And I think you got to also have, like, balance. You also have to be strong-minded, I've noticed. Especially yeah. me, I've always made decisions based on the fact that I know I could. So I would never, like, randomly just move to a place not knowing if I have the proper funding for it or nothing, yeah, you know, something yeah, like that. Yeah, so yeah. Um, you just got to you gotta, you gotta have balance. You got to have faith. And you got to make sure you have a plan. <laughs> a lot of people do things without having a strategic plan on, you know, their life. And it's like, that's what puts them in a downfall. Yeah, that is you true. Know. That is true. I I can say for me, I don't really like operating off of a plan. And that's something I got to fucking learn how to do. Because like you said, you, you, you're going to do something with, the, with knowing that you could do it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do something if like my, if, if my brain is telling me to, to, to not do it. 
because it's like I always got to go back to like Willie Shane, no bitch. If you back out, you a bitch. Right. And it's like, that's why I'm doing it. You know, it's just like anybody can persuade me to do damn near anything. If you mm. say I'm a bitch, a what? I ain't no bitch. I'm finna go do this, right? right? So backing out of anything to me is like, well, is she taking that bitch move out? But it's just like, also, do you feel like, do you feel like you have to prove a point? Because you know it's going to be people that's going to always say something. I got to prove a point to myself. Right. That's what I'm saying. Even like if people like say certain things, do you, that's what I was going to ask. Are you doing it to prove it to yourself or are you proving it to them? I got to prove it to myself. I really don't care what other people say right. or think. I can care less. <laughs> I really could care less, you know, but right. I got to prove it to myself because I sleep with myself at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, I wake up with myself, and I can't live with myself telling myself, like, live with myself knowing that, well, it's you bitched out on that move. Right. Like, you could have just stuck with it a little longer. Like, same with me. Like, I went to school. When I got to Clark, I had to pay 1500 a month. Oh, for tuition? Yes. Oh, my, my, my freshman <laughs> year. My freshman year. Right. My first year there, I had to pay 1500 a month for tuition. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was doing some of the things I was doing. Mm -hmm. Because I had to pay that 1500 a month. Right. And I was just like, I can't. I can't. That's the only reason why I didn't leave. Because it was like, I ain't no bitch. Right. I'm going to figure it out. If it costs me certain things, then, hey, at least I know I went and did my best. Yeah, I think for me it was a little easier because first semester, you know, you don't know. You ain't got yeah. no job. You don't know what you're doing. So... I think when I got that bill that next semester, <laughs> you know, and shout out to my grandma, she she paid like for half of my my what is it the apartment fee yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. she covered a lot, and then I just happened to become an RA, you know, yeah. those that next semester too. So I think I was doing that for four years. The so that whole kind of, time, yeah, that saved me good. a lot <laughs> of money, <laughs> and I was kind of grateful because I felt like God at that time, God was looking out for me trying to make sure I was straight. You know, because you in another state. For real. You don't know nobody. You don't know what's going on. You just see all these females because you know it's more girls, you know, the males uh, that wish was lovely. That was, that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best thing for me. I used to tell all of my homies, dog, you don't got to go to school to be smart. You don't got to go to school for this or that. Right. Just go to school for the bitches. Right. And then the, the, the ladies are going to force you to be like, okay, I need to get my shit together because I want to stay out here. Because they not going to fuck with you if you're not they having not shit gonna together. They're not going to fuck with you. <laughs> you're going to go home and you're going to be like, damn, I'm missing out on all that. Right. All that. And then it's just like, man, it forces you to stay, man. Sometimes you have to put yourself in an environment and stick with it for, I guess, the wrong reasons in order to get what you need out right. of it, right? So going to school for the and staying in school because you're trying to impress these women is like, all right, that may not be what everyone is telling you why you need to go to school, right. but you're going to come out of it with something. Right. You're going to come out of it a better dude, and that right there is going to shape your perspective on everything. Yeah, and I feel like at that time, me transitioning, I knew I wanted to come to Atlanta, you know, for music, but I also told myself, okay, if this music shit doesn't work out, I want to have like a backup plan. Yeah. So I always keep that in the back of my head. Like, I'm glad that I went to Clark and I'm glad that I graduated because I think a lot of times, too, people that might not have that much freedom, you know, some people come from like strict households. Yeah, yeah. I was just fortunate enough to have a mom that was like, okay, y'all don't have to hide nothing. Just call me wherever you at. You know, which she knew, you know, we was good for the most part, but she knew like we wasn't going to do nothing too much to where we, you know, would put ourselves in a situation. Exactly. So it was like we was already in Chicago partying and having a good time. So coming to Atlanta, it's like, oh, y'all just now doing this? doing the same shit. We, I did that already. Like, it's cool. Old. Yeah. This shit old. And the other people going to look at uh, the, the other parents and other families from the other side of the track going to look at you like, oh, your parents are bad and they don't really control you or, yeah. and all this extra stuff and it's like nah me being out here and wild and free and all this other stuff allowed me to really learn as much because then you right. start ahead of the game mm -hmm. right because I, I don't know about you but I felt like I was kind of you know years ahead of a lot of the peers when I first got mm -hmm. there because it's like them going out to a party to like 3-4 o'clock in the morning maybe their first time mm -hmm. for me it's just like Regular shit. I think because I'm just a natural turn up. It's just like, a, okay, that's cool. Because yeah. it was sometimes <laughs> where I was coming back, like, falling on my face. <laughs> but I also teaches you a uh, realm of responsibility. For real. I think especially being on your own. I know for me, uh, I'm the oldest. I have a little brother that's 26. Yeah. Um, and so I had to, like, be the responsible one and do what I was supposed to do so he could look at me as the example. Yeah. That, you know, yeah, makes yeah. him want to do yeah. what he's supposed to do, which he does. But I'm just saying, like, you know, I had a purpose. You know, I got somebody that's looking up to me. I got to show you, like, hey, this is what it is. But yeah. sometimes they don't listen. And you got to let them learn on their own. Because I know me, 
a lot of little, lot of, lot of little brothers, especially like me when I was a little kid, it was just like, let me learn on my own. Let me bust my head up. Yeah. Let me, let me fall and let me get yeah. arrested and just on myself. Even though you're telling me don't go that route, I'm just a badass and I'm doing it. Yeah, I mean, we both, me and him, he didn't been in some stuff, and he had his situations. But I think now, I think as you get older, it's like a learning process. You learn, okay, yeah, this route I'm going is not legitimate route that I need to go, and it's like I want to do better. Yeah, and so, and I'm proud of him because he actually certain situations he'd have been through or didn't been in. He's, you know, we've had conversations where we he's talked about like, you know, him better and stuff. You know, he want my brother wants to be like a musical engineer or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. yeah. So I think Atlanta, you know, would be great. That's for a him, good place. But, you know, I just he has to get some things in order to focus on certain things. Yeah. So, and like I said, you gotta for certain situations in certain places you have to have, you have to have a sense of maturity. Yeah. So, and I feel like Atlanta kind of taught me because I had to grow up fast. You got there by you yourself. Know, yeah. I kind of had to learn a sense of responsibility. And learn like, okay, is this where I want to go? If this is what I want to do, this is how I gotta do it. Yep. You know. And if you don't do it, shit just gonna fall out. Shit's right. not gonna be right, man. Right. But. For the main topic of the show today, man, one of the things, and it's not really a specific topic, but it's something that I've kind of always, and always, and sometimes I feel like more recently I've always had a problem with when it comes to mental health, is, um, like, when it comes to mental health, obviously, you got the depressive side, right? I get tired of seeing, and let me, like, that sounds bad to say, but, like, when, we, when I'm driving around, and even up the street, like, around the corner, it's a... A suicide sign Like mm. let's talk about suicide And we're talking about depression And everything Like when you think of mental health it For a lot of people It is draining mm. Right It's like huh, I gotta talk about my feelings I gotta express this stuff And mm. it, it's, it's Part of the reason As to why there's a negative stigma On mental health Is because it's pitched In a negative way mm. Right And when people think about Mental health The first thing they think about is a bunch of stuff that they don't want to deal with, right. which is suicide, which mm-hmm. is pain, which is trauma, which is all these other things. Mm-hmm. And granted, those are topics that everyone needs to face. Right. But I believe that's the side of mental health that gets too much attention. Obviously, it needs to get the attention because it's very, very good. But nobody is speaking about, I believe, the negative side of mental health. I mean, not the negative side, the positive side of mental health. Yeah. Right? Because, because, because. When, when your mental health is shit and it's bad and you have all of these obstacles and challenges, you're going to be depressed. You're going to be thinking about suicide. You're going to have all of this reckless stuff. But when you have that strong mind state, when your mental health is at its peak, when everything is good, you're getting over this problem. you got negative issues facing you and you just knocking them out the park like it's easy. You, mm-hmm. you're, you're able to get over stuff. You're feeling good and all this other stuff. And we're not talking about those, the, the positive side of mental health, right? We kind of just brush it off for our shoulder or we just think mental health only deals with negativity. Mm-hmm. For me, it's just like, it's, it's sometimes it can get tiring to speak about that because everything doesn't always have to be negative all the right. time. Like in all, like not in all of my groups, but in a lot of my groups and a lot of my process groups, I have to sit there and sometimes tell the patients like, yeah, I want to sit here and talk about depression and process. And they really be like, no. So fuck it. We finna sit in here and have fun. We finna mm-hmm. sit in here and speak about, you know, how, you know, the little things that she was able to get through as a kid gives you that strength to mm-hmm. be able to get through certain things now. But because you're looking at your your because you're looking at your relationship with mental health in a negative light, you think when it comes to mental health, it's just depression, it's just sadness, it's just isolation, it's just loneliness. Right. When nah, when if it's me and my boys and we out having fun and we all partying and we all in a good mindset, that's the that's the side of mental health mm-hmm. that nobody touches. And it's just like for me, it's just it gets sometimes kind of outdated, right? Or 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 really just irrelevant when it's like we just focus on that. And I feel like at the, and that's a good that's a good actually this is a good topic because I feel like me working also with kids in the behavioral mental health field i've been doing that for a while now so it's kind of like you see the ins and outs with adults and teenagers yeah and so i just find it you know interesting how you do have people that are only in it you know for the money and not the passion or the purpose i know for me um i always think about my brother you know while working in this field not saying like he has like he doesn't have a mental health issue but i think about you know different situations that can relate that you know the kids are going through yeah so it's just like I feel like like me I know my purpose is to 
you know, lead this gen- the younger generation down to a path of success. So even yeah. like every client or kid that I come across, I always give them the same quote, come out better than you came in. Yeah. Because it, you're right, people do look at it in a negative aspect. And it's like, it's that's not the only thing in mental health. Like you do have a positive route to it. I know sometimes we use uh, pros and cons, like the good and the bad. Like, you know, what is your, what is your purpose outside of, uh, you know, where yeah, you know, the facility yeah, and stuff yeah. and sometimes they say they want to be doctors they want to go to school they want to do you know regular stuff but people always think like when you're suicidal or when you're like when you have a behavioral issue oh you're bad you just don't want you don't want any help no people actually go through stuff but and it's things that they can actually get through they just yeah. need guidance yeah that's all you they know. need they need the guidance and they need to be able to see that you know there's not only one way to fix whatever mm-hmm. you need to get through because right uh, the the, the a lot of the kids in the hood, like the real reason why it's hard for a lot of young hood kids or a lot of people who grew up in the hood to mm-hmm. really go seek therapy and all these other things is because, one, we look at that as some white people shit, mm-hmm. right? That's just the things that white people finna do. I'm not finna, like, that's just how we look at it. But on the other side, it's kind of like, that shit don't relate to us. Like, we wasn't taught how to process. We wasn't taught how to sit there and really talk to someone. Right, mm-hmm. therapy is for black, a lot of black kids in the hood is, is your football coach. Therapy sometimes is your pastor. Therapy mm-hmm. is something obviously you're going to need to get that professional therapeutic mm-hmm. help at some point, you know. But for us, we have to realize that it's a bunch of different ways in which you can get help and get therapy, right? Mm-hmm. Get that relief, whether it's through working out, whether it's through meditating, whether it's through whatever. Do what works for you. We don't have to sit there and do. The regular, oh, I'm finna sit and we finna just talk about, you know, right. how am I feeling and I'm feeling sad and right. this is sad. And I think at that, I think you have to also incorporate real life situations. I know some people go by scripts. For real. You know, especially like, you know, if you're a therapist maybe and you, you go by a certain, what you were taught. Exactly. You know, but it's like you have to be able to be relatable to yep. these kids because a lot of the time they don't want nobody that's going to sit in their face. Oh, so how are you feeling? You know, um, do you feel like you want to kill yourself? You know, stuff like that. They don't want to hear that. You know, and then a lot of the time, too, you have to think it's proper parenting. A lot of their parents is like low key messed up, so they can't really guide them in a way that they should be guiding. You know, yeah. you got people, uh, I've dealt with kids whose parents were on drugs or are on drugs and still send them, you know, yeah. to the facilities and stuff. So it's just like, it's interesting is how it's like some of them don't have proper guidance they know, don't. or they don't know the route to go. They know? don't. It's just, and, and they just going what they just going the route that they see. Yeah. That they see their mm-hmm. parents going. Right. Mm-hmm. And and that's not, it's nothing wrong with that because it's how, and you're not necessarily doing it the wrong way because that's just how you was taught. Right. right. That's just what you see. Mm-hmm. But what, and I'm sure I'm positive that you can relate to this is that, you know, when you spoke about how scripts, mm-hmm. we do things based off of a certain script, and it's like therapists within this field, it's like, yes, like, okay, I'm in therapy. This is what <clears throat> this specific intervention says, and I'm mm-hmm. supposed to go about it this route, and blah, blah, blah. Right. And you start to realize that, like, yo, that shit don't work for that person. And then the therapist sitting there trying to wonder, like, why none of my patients don't like me, and blah, blah, right. blah. And it's like, for me, the reason why I get a lot. I don't want to say praise, but the reason why I have a, a good rapport with a lot of my patients is because not only do I meet them where they're at, but because it's like, we're not going off of that script. Right. Like that, that script don't matter. Right. And it's like, I'm sure you've been around like a lot of other coworkers who just like, are just bad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's been, it's just it's been a little challenging sometimes, especially when it's not necessarily the kid, oh, you yeah, know, it can yeah, be, yeah. You know the people you work with, but you the trigger, dog. Yeah, right. You the one who making yeah. this kid bad, right? And it's just like we have to. I think we, if you're working in that field, and it's like I said, not to knock no therapists and nothing like that, because I feel like they're heavily needed, especially. But I do feel like you do need to kind of make sure it's relatable to the kid, or depending yeah. on the situation. Because like I said, a lot of kids don't want to hear none of that. Oh, well, how are you feeling? Or you know, do you feel like you want to kill yourself and stuff? They they need somebody to like coach them or let them know it's gonna be cool. And you know what I'm saying? Like, for me, I know a lot of the kids I've come across have a good rapport with me because, you know, I, I'm one well, on top. Not even the fact that I'm an artist, but I try to make sure they understand that it's going to be cool. Yeah. And that's why I try to write music that's therapeutic to hear. Exactly. So, because it can relate to what people are going through. And it's different ways to get to what you need to get to. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, for a fact, my end goal is to make you better than what mm-hmm. you came in with. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean we have to go directly to your shit. It's like, nah, this is what we finna do. We finna make this left turn. We finna mm-hmm. go probably this music route. We finna turn right. up and blah, blah, blah. But right. within the music or within the turn up, you're gonna know like. Yeah. And it's not even necessarily dealing with music because you have a lot of creative kids in the world like whether it's music art dance you know a lot of them want to drawing be like dog, yeah drawings a lot of them want to be like doctors and stuff so it's just like all in your approach you have to make sure you're building a good rapport with these kids because a lot of the time they can hearing the same shit they're hearing the same you're not gonna be this or you gonna do this and, you know they don't need to hear none of that so they don't need to hear none of that and then these kids are very visual right very, oh very and smart very, visual, <laughs> very smart but what yeah. i've noticed is when you're walking into that room and you don't look like the kid, they're already like, mm-hmm. you no. Know, especially if you're a black kid, grew up in the hood, and, mm-hmm. and, and you're a white therapist and you walk into the setting. I know for me, when I've had some white teachers, I'm looking at you like, you don't know what the fuck we going through. Right. You, you can't relate to nothing. Is I'm finna act the ass just because I know I can. Right. You know, but when we see somebody that looks like us, we have that. We have a little bit more respect for that individual because it's something that we're familiar with. Right. So when it comes to you working with that kid, you have to understand you can't just, oh, we're finna sit here and talk about suicide. Nah, yeah. figure out what they into and then go that route. Right. And I think, too, also, you have to make sure, like I said, the approach is good. Because if you just approach the kid like, oh, you need to do this, they they going to start looking like, well, first off, who the fuck are you? <laughs> and yeah. second, why are you talking to me like you crazy? Yeah. So it's like, if you want respect, you got to give respect. You know what I'm saying? Now, like I said, I think it's the vibe with me. I've had kids write me notes telling me, you know, thank you for changing my life. At first, you know, kids that were coming in depressed, getting towards the end, they like, thank you, thank you, because I, I had them call me this name on the weekends. My name on the weekends is Chris Brown. So <laughs> I say, y'all, what's my name? He's like, Chris Brown. And so, you know, that's the little thing I don't do. Give me an example of a kid that you knew just was not fucking with you. I got a lot of those. Oh, man, you know, honestly, I... Through the transition of different, you know, kids that we get, that we get, it's always that one that oh, just yeah. gotta be difficult and stay. You know, and I'll be talking like I'm talking to you, like, "What's up, bro?" You know, yeah. everything good with you. And we we have female clients and males, so a lot of times, you know, especially covering males, we hot and tell. You see a girl, <laughs> oh, ah, but we gotta kind of try to explain to them, like, okay, you don't want nobody in the same facility as you because y'all both trying yeah, to get it together. Know, yeah, yeah, but you know, like I said, just coach them. But as far as like a kid being an issue, I know it was one time where. It was a, a young male. He didn't want to do something. And, you know, we do restraints. So it's just like we kind of got to, like. Go hands on. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, it, like I said, it depends on how, how bad it gets. But he just didn't want to, you know, do it. But sometimes we let them, like, have coping, like, coping skills. Yeah. Like, we let them play the game. We got Xbox One there. And we got a PS4. We got basketball court. So we kind of let them, depending on the situation yeah. and how they are. Because if we get a kid that's, like. A wall, they can't take their ass outside. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, you ain't coming back. No, right. And so then that'll be a whole another investigation issue. It's just like you want to make sure you make your conscious decisions. Dog, you, know? you really just reminded me of a. Uh, so, and this is this ain't off topic, but it's kind of off topic. But when we speaking about restraints, right? Mm-hmm. And, and if you don't know, sometimes when you're working in certain facilities, you have to go hands on and put your hands on a kid, not like spank him or anything, but mm-hmm. you got to put him in a specific hole so they could kind of be restrained i mm-hmm. guess kind of calm down or whatever right mm-hmm. and it was a kid a white kid right a little small white kid who a wall mm-hmm. right who left and i'm in this white neighborhood this white neighborhood everybody's republican everybody's voting for trump or whatever and i'm the big black <laughs> man that's chasing this white kid right right and we don't I, and and this kid is running through the neighborhood so i grab the kid i'm on top of the kid i have him in the in the restraint that we're supposed to have him into right and, and not even a few seconds later, shit. A few seconds later, not even a minute later, like, it's a guy that comes up. This white guy comes up, puts a gun in my head. Oh, wow. What the fuck is you doing? Blah, 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 blah. I had to pull out my bag, like, hey, yo, he at this agency, and blah, blah, blah. I'm just making sure he gets back, whatever. He's like, oh, okay. You know, it's like a lot of the times we don't, we don't look at the danger in which... You know, you as the helping professional is in, right? It's not just police officers that are in this field that, right. you know, are dangerous. I mean, that are put in harm's way. Like me, I work in a psychiatric hospital. Every day I get punched in the face. Like there's there was a guy who literally got his, like, his, I don't know, his face or some shit fractured because the patient socked him in the face that hard. Oh like really God. just. 
over. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be even get that close to me touching my face. We're going to have a problem there. But shit happens. That was <laughs> but, yeah, a- it does happen a lot. You know, and you just don't know. You know, like I said, if you're reading a report and you're seeing, okay, what this kid is in there for, you have to approach it a certain way, depending on, like I said, what they're in there for. Because you got some that are, like, just aggressive. You got some that have, uh, what is it, uh, autism. Yeah. So, and it's crazy because I remember one time it was a kid that I was uh, working with, and this dude, you could type in any math number in your phone, like, Let's say 100,000 times 20 And he would know it He'd get it He'd know it Like right yeah. off bat And it's just like these they act, Kids like that Are really smart They yeah. really really smart Yeah But it's just like People always see them And I always I think I had this conversation With somebody like last week I was saying We always give You know Praise to the You know I'm, I'm gonna say regular kids You know In the high schools Cause they You know They go into this school Or that school But we always forget to Get the kids that are going through that behavioral mental health status, and the, and the thing is, it's just like and looking at the comments. Yes, Keith, this is a, a a true story. But you know, going into that, it's just when it comes to behavioral health, the behavioral kids, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a side of me that believes like ADHD is mm-hmm. is not a real diagnosis. There's a side of me that believes like ODD is not a real thing. Because if we're just looking at the child and if we're looking at just who they are and how they're behaving, right? They may be a badass kid, but they're probably just a badass kid because that classroom was boring, Mm -hmm. right? Or they were being bullied. Or they were being bullied, Mm -hmm. right? That behavior is just them trying to figure out how to express themselves, right? Right. So I'm going to act the ass so I won't get bullied so I can kind of be the cool cat, Mm -hmm. right? Or I'm going to act the ass because I'm bored. Or I'm going to act the ass because I can't really see in class. So so you won't call on me. I'm going to just act the fool or whatever it is. And it's just like those type of kids don't really get the attention. They really get disciplined. No, they get sent out the classroom or exactly. sent to an alternative school because the teacher feel like they just bad as hell when really they just they could be going through something you don't know if you don't have that conversation. Exactly. And I think a lot of the times people brush those type of kids off because they feel like, oh, well, they're acting out um, and don't know what's really going on. You don't know what's going on in the household. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know if they're getting bullied. They don't even get a chance. No. But you're going to praise the one that's a class clown because they do the work, it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Because what I what I've seen that is uh, anyway, like some therapists are just scared of their clients. Mm-hmm. There's nothing That's wrong, true. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. But when you're an individual who is not used to seeing that behavior, and then your 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 kid in that classroom is acting a fool, or that client is acting a mess, you're going to be scared. Mm-hmm. So you're not gonna you're not going to be thinking in terms of like, well, maybe I should. It's like no. Send him off somewhere mm-hmm. else and let me praise this one kid and blah, 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 which is why it means so much more to have those individuals within this field who could relate mm-hmm. in some type of way, yeah. right? You don't have to be the doctor or the teacher or whatever. You could just be a regular on the floor staff mm-hmm. just chopping it up with the kid because it's those individuals who have the, the, the biggest effect on those kids because they're the closest ones. Right. And then I think, too, People got to stop always thinking that it's always going to be fucking easy. You're going to have times where it's going to be like, okay, what's going on? Like, you're going to have, like, rough stages. It's not going to always be perfect and pitch perfect and stuff like that. But it's just like you have to remember your purpose. Like, I know for me, I know my purpose is to help the younger generation. Not even just my generation, but the kids below me because they looking at this a higher generation like oh I want to be like him I want to be like him I want to be a rapper like him or stuff like that yeah. but you want to make sure if you I think as far as being an artist you want to make sure that you're leading them in a positive light not saying that your life is just so perfect because I know me I don't try to be perfect I ain't gonna never be perfect but I always keep it 100 with everything that I do and I always make sure I let kids know like okay if you're gonna do this or if you're gonna do that you have to have a a, a plan go or end goal mm-hmm. you know because it's not gonna be given to you you know everybody don't get golden spoon fed nah, so you, you gotta, gotta kind of work <laughs> for what you want so um but what about those kids who um for you right what's your approach when you're dealing with those kids who are not trying to hear you out at all well you know me i'm very observant of everything i think yeah. that's that that psychology psychology degree kind of played a part in that but um well i'm just naturally observant but that taught me more to be more observant for certain behaviors so I think for me, I could kind of tell, like, if I walk in a room, if a kid, which one's aggressive, which ones might be having, like, cutting you issues. You are the one I need to keep my eye on. 
I'm just pointing like I'm oh, just oh yeah yeah that. yeah <laughs> like yeah like some of them like that be especially the ones that be really really quiet yeah and just be like like staring at you like because a lot of the times when you got kids and nephew they peep out everything right. you got to kind of constantly explain to them you're not in jail because yep. some of them have that jail mentality or they coming yep. from jail to yeah. those type of places so yep. they assume oh it's just gonna be just like where I'm at you know so it's kind of like as far as like approach I, I approach them saying like you know introduce myself hey how you doing um and just introduce my, like I said, myself. Or make a tell a little joke because you never know. They might see it as, oh, this person's yeah. cool. You want to yeah. make sure they feel comfortable. Yeah. And a lot of times they come in there, they don't feel comfortable because they don't know where they at. Um, sometimes, depending on the behavior, you there for longer than you're supposed to be. So it's just kind of like you have to approach it in a positive route. For real. For real. Mm-hmm. When, and, and, because what we're speaking, what it sounds like we're speaking about right now is alternative routes or alternative ways in order to really help or work with someone outside of just talk about your suicide or just talk about your depression or blah 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 me i hate that right i hate going the direct in your face let's talk about right. suicide all the time mm-hmm. like, it's needed but we don't need to talk about it all the time right? right so when it comes to you my man when it comes to you and when it comes to your shit right what are some alternative routes that you use in order to be able to get through your own shit as far as personally um, let's see. I mean, I I think for me, like I said, I just kind of like remember my purpose. Um, I'm very strong minded, <laughs> so I kind of like don't let that feel break me into like you know a bad negative mode. But I like I said, I always look at like my purpose. So I think about my own little brother. So a little situation he got going on, and you know what how can that relate to what the kids are you got some kids that are coming like straight from jail or yeah. you know that are coming from a lot of times they not even really suicidal they just say that because they even get in an argument with their parent say or that again, dog. the divorce you know a lot of these kids most of them not suicidal they're True. just saying that to find a, a a different route or you got some that's coming from jail or yeah. they don't want to come home that's in the facility and say oh well i feel like i want to kill myself so they won't have to face that situation going back home yeah. a lot of the time a lot of most of them kids don't get along with their parents or their parents on drugs or they not being taken care of i'm finna use this as an escape yeah using it as an escape and like they like i said these these kids are smart they pay yeah. attention to everything they know exactly what to say and it's just like sometimes they just they don't have a home a lot of times you get kids that don't have no clothes they come straight from the hospital they come in the hospital you know attire and it's just like they just want to feel like they have a home you said you have a strong mind, man. How did you develop that strong mind? Oh, shit. <laughs> um, a lot of the situations I went through growing up, I had to. I had to grow up, you know, fast. My mom was, you know, she went through a divorce very heavily, which yeah. kind of impacted a lot of the situations, you know, my own little brother went through. And, yeah. Um, I kind of had to be the one to be like, okay, this going to go like this, you know. Uh, you kind of was put in that position to where you to had be, to grow, grow up. up. Fast. Yeah, I had to, and it, and I think it kind of made me the you know the way I am now because yeah. I look back at certain situations like, damn, I like really got through that shit. Like for real, for real, I got my mom through that shit. Because whenever like even for example, whenever my mom needs advice about something, she calling me. Yeah, like, it's crazy because a lot of people, a lot of even my friends, they call me for advice or text me about stuff, and it's just like. Damn, they must think I don't got nothing going Man, on. They don't, but, <laughs> but we it's, it's hard for us to even look at, like, within the middle of that storm, it's hard for us to even think about the fact, like, yo, this shit is going to help me be better on the back end. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it's, 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 we never think about that. Right. We never think about that. We never even, like, in that middle of it, it's like, we're not thinking about nothing else, but, like, this is just bad. And right. the thing is, the reason why it's so important to understand that like what you're going through right now is going to make you stronger on the other end is because it's going to develop that strong mindset mm-hmm. you're not going to get to that strong mindset or to that strong place in which you want to be if you don't go through shit right like, and i think it's also that and just being honest which is like it took me some time to be like okay look you good at this shit because you know you have your little self doubts about certain things like, yeah is people definitely. really gonna fuck with me about with this music stuff or is people really gonna be listening but then you have to realize you know god gives you talents and gives you purpose and gives you things for a reason so it's like he wouldn't have gave me this talent if i wasn't you well, know, what's good. the reason what's the reason when we're not getting anything from that talent what do you mean if my talent is to i don't know sing mm-hmm. and i feel as if i'm not getting anything from this talent 
what's the reason for it? Well, I also feel like, too, that comes with confidence. You okay. know, sometimes you, as an artist, I'm sure, not even just being an artist, with anything that you do, yeah. we sometimes, as people, have, like, self-doubt because we see social media plays a big part in a lot of shit that goes Everything, on. Yep. So people see these people on these high pedestals, like, oh, they doing this and a third. I need to do this. But those people are not showing you the back end of what they had to do to get there. For you know real. what I'm saying? Like, you really got to, like, grind for what you want. And it took me, like I said, even after graduating from Clark, I didn't know where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do. I didn't know if I wanted to keep doing Snaps. music. Yeah. Like, it just was, like, a mind-blowing thing to me. And then on top of, like, dealing with certain situations from back home, you know, it was like, okay, JD, you got to get this shit together because this is your life. You only yeah. live it for you. You can't live for nobody yeah. else. Now, you know, I'm Gucci. I'm at a point where it's like, you can't tell me shit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, you have to also cancel out all the negativity because people, I feel like people that always have like a negative thing to say about something, it's, it's their own fears yeah. that they haven't accomplished or they haven't conquered. So they, they put those fears on you uh -huh. and cast, like, uh -huh. it's like casting stones, like how they say they cast the stones. And that's the thing right you know. there, right? We don't even want to acknowledge the fact that this is our own fear. Right. Right? We're going to sit there and like blame it on everybody. I'm not here because I didn't do that. I'm not here because I did that. And blah, 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 blah. Right. When in reality, you just scared to go that route. Mm -hmm. Right? It takes a lot of just you being just honest with yourself yeah or, and just knowing knowing who you are knowing like what you want out of your life out of life and knowing like okay what's the common goal when i say common goal i don't necessarily mean you know you have to go to school school not for everybody shit yeah. i didn't want to go to college but i felt like if i wanted to pursue you know music i felt like i just needed that in my back corner. Real, yeah. yeah yeah so i felt like a lot of the time a lot of the things that i did like even in college i felt like it was because god had a reason for yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I always stay grateful, especially like my mom growing up in a church field. She always preached the word to us, even certain things we didn't even want to hear. Mm -hmm. But it's like, even though I'm not, you know, a part of that religion all the way, I still value certain things that was taught to me. Yeah. You know, and that's what I think comes to the strong mind. Thing. And then like situations you go through, you know, everybody, I'm sure everybody in this room that went through some situations where it was just like, you came out better than you know oh, for real yeah so real. i think you just kind of have to like stay but, focused but the thing is it's like you're going to come out better if you allow that shit that you win to kind of if you soak in that shit that you win because what happens is what i've noticed is sometimes when we're going through nonsense we try to act like this situation ain't bad mm -hmm. you know we try or it to, don't affect us it don't affect us we mm -hmm. too tough we too hard i nah, addition not nothing so then you're kind of doing yourself a disservice by not allowing yourself to kind of be weak or to be vulnerable so you can get stronger on the other mm -hmm. end. You got to stay focused like what you said, right? But in the midst of it, like, you be down. I'll be down to tell, like, that 15-year-old kid, to, hey, just be focused. Yeah, no, I, know. I think with kids, especially nowadays, especially in this generation, because I'm sure y'all, yeah. growing up, it was yeah. we wasn't thinking about taking no pills at least i wasn't i was too busy trying to be outside you know oh, nah. or having shit, access to it like this, this stuff is like it's accessible. crazy it's crazy to <laughs> think that like there are kids who doesn't who don't know a world without social media mm -hmm. you know like we know what it was like before yeah because instagram was not even all oh, i think people was on myspace and all this other stuff even, even, even shit even before myspace i think right. myspace was like what middle like, school 2010 high, i think high school yeah high school elementary school fucking early ages middle school yeah. like we didn't have this shit mm -hmm. we didn't have none of it so we understand how to we understand that the, the we understand the the, the 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 importance of being able to soak in right. i guess that energy or that 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 moment or whatever now within the social media age it's like we we all want to chase perfection right, right? we all want to chase something out there right because right. what's really happening is we're comparing our blooper reel to someone's highlight reel mm -hmm. and then that makes it even more times harder because you're looking at them like they are good when in reality like it took them all day to figure out Pro probably years to figure out how to make it work mm -hmm. you know and you're not giving yourself that ability or that time to really trying to figure things out because you're running away from the situation because you're trying to dodge or whatever it is mm -hmm. right we don't really get it but we never we never soak in the moment to right. be able to grow. And I, I just feel like with that, too, you kind of, like, you kind of, like, got to show, like, you ain't really got to show the grind. You just kind of just work for everything that you, you know, that you want. And I just feel like sometimes people feel like they have to get the easy way out. So 
they'll do whatever's necessary as far as like to get it easy. But then that just shows you that you shows that you got poor work ethic because you want the easy route. You don't want to work for it. What could they do to build that work ethic? Obviously, work. Well, but... on, well, outside of working, you need to. I feel like being around other like-minded individuals who want the same type of goal. Not even the same goal. Not saying you have to like both do like let's say music or something like yeah, that. But yeah, have yeah. that same mentality of I want to be successful. Being around those people because most of the time. We, us as people, we surround ourselves with, we try to be cool, but we surround ourselves with people that might not be of the best caliber for us or who let, allow their fears to portray on you. So every time you do something, it's like, oh, well, he shouldn't do this. Or try to tell you how you should live your exactly, life. Exactly, right? I'm finna hang out with you because of that, and I'm finna hang out with you because I know you ain't shit. Right. So because I know you ain't shit, that's gonna put me up here. Right. And that's gonna put or you Or who down you here. might know or, you know, who you surround yourself around. It's like you want to always make sure – you keep the realest of the realest. I I, I can't fake the funk. I can't yeah, be around nobody yeah, that ain't of my best interest or that I don't fuck with. Yeah, for so. real. But, <laughs> but it's also that also goes back into what we were speaking about earlier in terms yeah. of uh, growing out of the people that we've grown up with. Mm-hmm. You know, because and it's not like it's a, a a shot thrown at certain people we've grown up with because like they're not on the same like lane as us mm-hmm. right because right. but we've just moved forward right? right it's like we're not moving in the same direction anymore as we used to and then for a lot of people they have to understand that it's okay to kind of move apart yeah. from the individuals that you've always grown up with i think people always try to bring everyone with mm-hmm. them everybody right? can't go everybody cannot go with you and it's not and it's not even like that everyone can't go it's just like you can't go with me right now right yeah that's what i mean like you can't like I think sometimes too when you have like close friends like for me yeah. I know I always try to make sure my friends is good mind you like me the friends I grew up with we're connected because of social media yeah so we it's like we grew up but I've always been like that I guess in general I've never been like a click, clickish person anyway even in college like yeah, yeah, yeah. I was cool with everybody but you would never just see me with one group of people like that just yeah. never was me because yeah. I was always I don't know my mom always say treat people how you want to be treated so even in high school people that might not have been the whatever the word is the most popular or the people that you know might have been like the quietest i spoke to them more so than anybody else but i was respected because i spoke to everybody it wasn't like oh i'm not gonna fuck with you because you don't have this or i'm not gonna fuck with you because you don't play this sport like no you can't have that mentality because you just don't know Mm -hmm. what how that person can help you in life you know what i'm saying so i've always been like (laughs) <laughs> solo no <dolo. laughs> I'm just cool with everybody but but it's, it's it's a level of confidence that comes in that though yeah and I think that too a lot of people don't know how to operate by themselves yeah so they kind of have to have not saying you shouldn't have you should have like a group of friends you should kick it with you know to keep your mental right but for you know real, for real, for real. it's just like you always want to make sure those people bring a value bring the know, best out you. of you like it's crazy because that's why I respect my cousin so much Q because all his people that he cool with they all been cool like not only since they was like little but they all are doing something exactly you know yeah. you're not finna hang with nobody that just you're not finna ain't be around doing no just, shit. Just, yeah just, just eating off of my plate and you ain't contributing yeah so and i think we all gotta as people we gotta have that mentality like make sure you around people that's gonna you know be on the same length way we gotta you. have that we definitely gotta have that mentality into those individuals who are telling you for those individuals who get mad when someone tells you to contribute you you got to get out of that mentality because something what i've noticed is that like you just said with, with your cousin right he's not going to be around someone who's not bringing something to the table right right but when i tell you like hey you got to bring something to the table don't get mad at the fact that i'm telling you that you got to bring something to the table right you got to work a little bit harder you got to i'm trying to help you out i'm trying to mold you i'm trying to build you to and a that's a table. real friend not that's no a not a friend. not a yes man because you got some people that just say oh yeah you should do this oh yeah i like it like you're not really being a friend if you're telling somebody you know Yes, all the time. Oh, agree. Because you got those type of people too that are like they try to people please, and so I know I say that because I used to be like that growing up, and then I realized, wait me a too. minute, me too. I don't give a fuck about me. What I look like? <laughs> <laughs> once you, you know, reach, you live and you learn. Once you so. reach that age and when you realize nobody really cares about you, yeah. nobody really cares the way you think they care. Everything gonna go much so much smoother. Right. You're gonna be able to move without the thought of someone might be like talking shit about. Right. And that's what gives you and even myself the ability to move solo, the ability right. to move on your own because it's like people ain't really worried about me like that anyway. Mm-hmm. Right? And that gives you the ability to really mingle and work with everyone else. 
But like I said, it takes a confident person to really be able to do that. Yeah. And not too many people can. And that's what I was saying. You gotta have a you gotta really have a strong a strong mindset to first off to have confidence because if you allow, like I said, other people's fears and their negativity and their not doing what they wanna do, so they kinda like put you in a space where it's like they feel like, oh well, you doing the most or this that and the third. You kinda gotta like I said, you gotta stay away from those people. Yeah. Those people are gonna drain you. Even like work maybe I should say working that bit, you got people that just they might be in there for the money. They don't really sure. care. Sure. So it's just like I know like I said my purpose and what I'm doing and what I want to this younger generation to see like y'all I love you know people we got y'all back you know especially us us African American young men you know we gotta kinda like help them you know guide them in the right righteous way they need to be cause a lot of times they don't even have like you know father figures and I say you gotta be somebody dad or nothing like that but it's like if you could just be that role model for them that, you just know. yeah they don't they don't see something different mm -hmm. right and what I mean by that is like we just we all see the same thing in the uh, we see Born the block We see mm -hmm. bullshit We see all this other stuff But we don't see like Oh shit That person Is going to school for this Or that person Is going to school for that It's like nah So our perspective Is only built around That box in which we see Right So we gotta expand Certain things And that can be given Through those father figures Or those individuals That are doing things A little bit differently In the hood Because they may I ain't gonna say Have the answers But they're on to something else that you may not even touch yet. Yeah, and that's and it's crazy because somebody two weeks ago made a, st a comment to me. Um, I had went to this like event, and you know, I don't know, I don't know if it's because how I carry myself, but somebody was like, uh, "Yeah, uh, do you like rap?" And I said, "Yeah, I like rap." Oh, you look like you like rap. So what is that? And it was obvious. <laughs> so it was just crazy. I was like, "What does that mean, though?" And they were just saying like. Well, no, they not knowing I have a degree, not knowing, you know, what All I do and stuff. stuff. Yeah. But people always, we got to always, we got to stop assuming, I think. Because people look at you and see this image and think, oh, they not. Even like my homies in the hood and stuff, people might see them a certain way, not knowing this nigga got a master's, you know, this person working on, they doctor, like, you just can't assume people mm -hmm. just aren't doing nothing because of how they carry it. So everybody ain't going to be in a tux and suit all day, every day. I don't even like doing that all day, every day. It doesn't fit everyone, No, right? It's not, it doesn't. It's and, like, no. it doesn't. It's like what we're speaking about now in terms of the alternative routes of approaching certain things when it comes to mental health. Yeah. I don't have to wear a suit all the time to be this person. I don't have to, like, do this, right? right? I really perform differently as a therapist than a lot of my peers. That works for me, and that allows patients, certain clients, to really, you know, build that rapport a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. But that right there isn't going to work for other people, right? right? We got to understand that, you know, what works for you may not work for the next person. Because mm -hmm. I come off aggressive sometimes, and sometimes that can make other people not trigger. like me as a yeah. therapist. I could trigger some of folks, mm -hmm. and that's cool. But we got to understand, it's it, on one end, it's cool that you like what you like, and you're operating on your own terms, but... Also understand that it's okay for the fact that somebody doesn't like you. Yeah, and I th and I think sometimes, especially when you somebody that tries to be liked by the world. I guess I wouldn't say me personally because I really don't care. <laughs> but it's just like you want to make sure you try to make sure everybody is good. But it's not everybody's not gonna make sure you good. So oh, it's yeah. just kind of like okay, you you kind of gotta like still continue to be your same person, but don't let nobody else like negativity like yeah. mess you up you know yeah 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 and, it, and it's hard especially when you don't even know who you are right when you don't even know who you are how to even go back that route to figuring out who you are a lot of times we just following the 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 the, the cool person in the hood to try to be like them but then we realize they really ass and when we're trying to figure out who we are it's right like, we don't really get it right and then you just gotta i think especially working in that field you have to understand that it's not about you all the time i think a lot of times people think that well why i'm not getting this or why i'm not doing that or why is this it's not about you you're here because you chose to be here i would assume you chose to be here because you want to make a difference in like kids lives or wherever that you know that whatever you're doing but you know like i said for me i chose to work with kids that have behavioral mental health issues because I want to make a difference with them. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, we always focus on the ones that are already down the path or already yeah. going towards a successful route, but we forget the ones, uh, Ron or Mark or Amber or Becky that's over there having suicidal that's ideations. Really struggling. Cutting, yeah, that's really going through it. So it's like, take the time out to see what's going on rather than assume. Because exactly. you don't know just because you read that 
kid in here for this. You don't know what happened for that. You know you what don't. I'm saying? You, you don't. don't know. And you don't have to go at them with the whole, hey, let's talk about suicide. Or, yeah. Let's talk about that actually, that actually, I feel like, is a bad route. It's going to push the kid away. Yeah, because then it's going to be like, okay, y'all think I'm crazy. Y'all think something wrong. Everybody's no. not at that place. Right. And you have to take your time with folks, especially with the kids. Like, mm-hmm. I know this for a fact that you understand that you got to take your time and you got to have to move when they move. Mm-hmm. Right? You give them a little nudge, a little push or whatever. But the second you try to push them too hard, the second they're going to be like, nah, I ain't fucking with you. Right. That's what it is. And, they are, and then you got some that be in there looking like Debo. It'd be like, hold on now. <laughs> Look, now, I know I you big, this, but I need you back up. Chest out yeah, because so y'all see you're going to be an issue. It's just some you know that's just going, all right, you're going to be something serious. Yeah. But then it's like I, like you said, it's all in your approach. How you approach them is how they will respond. Exactly. How you approach them is how they respond, man. So, uh, shit, moving on forward to the next, not the next, but the last part of the show, right? It's a question, a question I always um, put out there, a question I never really write or I never write down or anything like that. It's more so a question I just pick up from the vibe or the energy and all the good stuff that I get from the actual show, right? So the question I'm going to pose to you, my man, and the question I'm going to pose to a lot of individuals listening is that when it comes, we spoke a lot about um, rapport, Mm -hmm. right? When it comes to building that rapport with other people, when was the last time you actually built and tried to build that rapport with yourself? With myself? Woo. Uh, <laughs> let me see. I guess as far as like, hmm, when you say rapport with myself, what, what do you mean? I'm confused. So I'll answer the question. Right okay, so when it comes to... When it comes to rapport specifically within this therapeutic or this helping professional, right, it's building, what that basically means is building a sense, building some form of relationship, right, some form of positive therapeutic relationship with that individual so it can be a little bit easier to work with them, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when I say building a rapport with yourself, how are you building that relationship with yourself so you can be able to be at the best person you can be? Oh, wow. Okay, now I get the question. So I think for me, um, it's it's, it's more so faith. Like I said, I I have a purpose. I think about my own little brother. You know, um, unfortunately, my brother is in um, a situation where he's like in jail right now. So it's just like, I always think about, you know, why, like, what do I need to do to make sure that he's good or how he'll look at certain things that I do? Because he looks at, every, you know, I'm his older brother. He look at everything that I do. Yep. So I think, like I said, for me to be good, I think about him. I think about my mom. I think about, you know, where I want to go in my life. You know what I'm saying? I think about, you know, God. You know, I have faith, you know, that he always guides me to do everything that I want to do. Mm-hmm. And he, he's the reason, like, you know, that I'm here on this earth for my purpose. Yeah. And so I felt like it was my job duty to kind of, like, help other people. I've always knew, like, growing up, I wanted to help people because I grew up, my mom is a helping person. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That was kind of, like, you yeah. know, taught to me. So it's, like, treat people the way you want to be treated, help people, keep God first, stuff like and that. And the other thing I want to just kind of say to that, and then I say to that, it's just to make sure that you don't feel down when shit don't go the way you think it's supposed to go because a lot of times when it comes to helping people out we put so much into it and then when we see that person who we're helping out life like go down the drain even more so while we're working them with them we're going to start to feel bad we're going to start to you know take in all of that pain we're going to start to feel bad that that person is in jail or their life has yeah. turned to shit or whatever and it's important to understand that as much as we all try to try our best to help with someone they are going to make the ch- choices that they're going to make. Mm-hmm. You just have to make sure you're doing everything that you're doing on your end. Yeah. So you don't leave with the, uh, oh, I should have done more. Or right. I should have done this. Blah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And I just think, too, you kind of got to remember, like you say, self like It's like self- having self-validation. You have to kind of know who you are and know yep. where you want to go. And I think a lot of people, like I said, we talked about fears. Yeah. A lot of people have these fears. I'm sure we all have had them. Mm-hmm. So it's like, but you have to know, okay, out of this fear, what, what do I want to accomplish? And so a lot of people, they, they think they can't do certain things. I feel like this guy's doing like, you could do anything you put your mind to. And people was telling me not to come to Atlanta for school. Yeah. I had so many people telling me, well, it's too far. You're away from your family. This thing, I went here and shit they was talking Man, about. I like, <laughs> I really do fuck with what you just said, right? Out of this fear, 
what do I want to accomplish? Mm -hmm. So I, I guess another question along with that question I just asked, out of the fear that you currently do have, um, what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to get out of that, right? Um, what is it? I know for me, um, it's just a better sense of self. Because we're forever going to be um, discovering who we are. We're never really going to have ourselves ends. down yeah. to a T. Right. So out of the fears that I have, the biggest thing that I want to accomplish is just gaining a better sense of self. Mm. I think for me, out of the fears, fear, I should say, I have is just making sure through any transition of my life when it comes to like my musical career yeah. that I continue to remember who I am. Because yeah. a lot of times, you, if you notice, not even just in the music industry, but anything, people change based off of what they're doing or forget okay you had to work to get to this point you got to kind of humble yourself yeah so it's kind of like i always remember like to keep you know like i said god first and just remember that i have a purpose yeah and so um and i have somebody who is part of my purpose my little brother so i gotta <laughs> gotta like remember that too you gotta but it's sure. also it kind of like makes me think of like the kids like i'm a big firm believer and advocate for kids and just making sure that they have the best successful lives that they uh -huh. can have definitely so yeah, even whether it's behavioral mental health or it's just the yeah, regular smeggy. All that stuff. Yeah. All that stuff. All that stuff. My man JD, man. Good looking for coming through, dog. No problem. I know this has been a wild weekend for you, brother. I know. Los Angeles, y'all be lit. <laughs> I'm still recovering. My organs are still messed up. <laughs> hey, you got a flight to go get on to tomorrow, man. Yeah, and, back and, to ATL. Man. I'd appreciate you for coming through, man. For real, for Thank real. Thank you for the invite. Even when you had all this other stuff going on this weekend, because you was wild. Yeah, you know. You seen, you seen the Insta stories. You already know. Man, I didn't even have to see it. I know the type of brother you is. Oh, yeah. So. That too. You know I be with the turns up. I so. be with the shit shit. Thanks to man, my cousin. So, you said you do music, right? Yes. Where can people find music if you have music out there? Or what uh, do you have come in? Or what's up? So, this is the thing for, for everybody that might not know. My name is Jay Delane. I am a singer-songwriter from Chicago, Illinois. Um, you can find my music on Apple Music, Tidal, uh, YouTube. I got to do a lot of... Uh, covers on youtube so as far as like singing uh cover songs but i'm working on a new music i got a new single that i'm working on that i'll be working on this week when i go back to atlanta called gotta gotta let you go um and it basically talks about things or situations or people who we kind of linger on to that are not healthy for us but eventually we have to let the that situation or those people go because yeah. it's not benefited us in the long run yeah. so definitely 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 they follow you jaden land on uh and my instagram? instagram yeah my so my facebook is J Delane, J dot Delane. Uh, my Instagram is J dot Delane underscore. It's two underscores, I think. And Twitter is J Delane. Same yeah, thing. Same thing everywhere. Yeah. Minus an underscore. I only got a Twitter. Then. I got an Instagram and a Facebook. Just Nothing three. else because people be. <laughs> my just the three. Just the three. Just the three. Yeah, man. just the three. So, shout out to all those individuals who are listening, man, who are tuning in. Good looking. Shout out to those individuals who. Listen, halfway through the show, good looking. Those individuals are going to be listening tomorrow, next week, next year. Um, good looking to you, too. And even more so, like I always say, shouts out to those individuals who ain't never, ever, ever going to listen to this in their life. You may not fuck with me now, but you will fuck with me at some point in time. You right. will catch on eventually. You'll catch on to this show. You'll catch on to my boy music. you catch on to Diddy's photography. You're going to catch on to whatever. But your ass going to catch on, my player, my boy, my dog, whatever. As always, always remember, man, ain't no wealth without your mental health. So please stay blessed and take care of yourself. Be great, y'all. Peace.